Apple just announced iPadOS 16, which brings a ton of features to the M1 iPads. I was wondering if the update made the iPad Pro better than the Tab SA Ultra from a productivity point of view. Stage manager, proper support for external display, finally, and many other features that iPadOS 16 are meant to kind of bring to improve productivity. So I've installed the developer beta version of iPadOS 16 on both my M1 iPad Air and the M1 iPad Pro, and the results are intriguing. Have they caught up with Samsung? Let's go through it. I'm Alex and I do down to earth tech reviews. Let me preface this video by saying things will be moving very quickly in the, in the next few weeks. You know, new beta versions will be released. And frankly, I need personally more time to really use it more than two, two and a half days, which I've had so far to give you a more detailed review. So make sure you are subscribed to the channel so you don't miss out when I do update this video. With the latest announcements at WWDC 2022, Apple seem to have brought the iPad some features that will finally allow us to use this device in a more productive way. It's not that it was useless before. There are many of you out there, I know from my previous videos, who were already making use of the iPad as their main machine. And there were many of you, many others, who actually didn't care too much about that and were quite happy and still quite happy uh, with the iPad as a tablet. I'm not going to lie, I've been pretty disappointed with the wasted potential specifically on the M1 iPad Pro, which means when Samsung released the Tab SA Ultra um, a few months ago, I bought it immediately. And to my delight, it was everything I was hoping that the M1 iPad Pro should have been. And look, I'm quite pragmatic when it comes to these things and I wasn't asking for a lot. I was, you know, I'm not even asking for full pro versions of things like Final Cut or, you know, even though that would be amazing. All I wanted was to be able to use my tablet normally but every now and then, if I needed to use it as a laptop at a cafe or a home and you know, connecting to a monitor, I just could connect it to a, like a keyboard, a mouse, and work away. Mouse and keyboard, check. Monitor, nah. Somehow, Apple thought that this was not important to us. Or the cynic in me tells me that they were scared that people wouldn't buy the, the MacBook Pros anymore or any MacBooks, which I think is ludicrous, right? I believe there is a space for both the MacBooks and the iPads to, co to coexist. Just like the Tab SA Ultra doesn't get rid of Windows and it allows me to work with an external monitor without a fuss, right? Samsung DeX on the Tab SA Ultra is incredibly useful. I've used it on the, on the S22 Ultra on the, on the actual smartphone. It wasn't as good. Um, and I know a lot of you out there actually use the Tab SA Ultra with DeX as your main setup. And I can totally see that being the case for many people. DeX is fairly stable now, right? There are some little issues, but for most of the stuff that I care about, and I'm sure lots of you care about, like running multiple windows and using Microsoft Office, it's perfect. You know, there, there's obviously improvements. There's always improvements that can be made. But if I remove my graphic design workflow and my video editing workflow, I can totally work with that tablet all day long on the Tab SA Ultra because of that ability to properly multitask and use external monitors. When the iPad Pro was announced last year with the M1 chip, like many people, I got ahead of myself and I bought the 16 gig, you know, and I thought, this is it. Apple are finally going to give us some pro features. Their event in April 2021, I'll never forget that. It was pretty misleading, right? They were showing some stuff in there that really indicated that we could use that the iPad as a pro device more than more than previously. Well, that never happened, and I've since been complaining pretty much on a weekly basis, feels that way anyway, on you know, about the lack of features on this iPad Pro. And I've mentioned this on pretty much all of my video things. And I've, you know, if you follow me on Twitter, you're probably fed up with me moaning about this pretty much on a daily basis there. Now, with iPad OS 16, Apple have given us some pretty cool features that promise to be just like Samsung DeX or you know, a little bit of Windows 11 and Mac OS, to be fair. Now, bearing in mind that this is still in beta, I think it's very good, right? Credit where it's due there. My threshold for user acceptance is really quite high. You know, you would have to be crashing a lot and being really buggy for me to complain. So being a beta version, the first developer beta, that's actually not too bad. It's definitely quite laggy still in some, some areas, like, you know, when you're using an external monitor. And the eagle-eyed ones out there will probably notice that I'm not really doing this properly yet, or I'm probably missing something here. That is to be expected. I didn't do any reading or research on how exactly this is meant to work. Apart from watching the, the event and kind of seeing how, how, it's, how people are using it, 
I'm trying to use this like I would if I was just taking the iPad out of the box. And it was easy enough to figure out to be fair, but the main thing that annoys me is the fact that at the moment, you can't really drag a window from the iPad to the external monitor. At least I can figure it out. You know, some apps like Procreate, for example, which is an app that most people who are like uh, artists out there on the iPad really care about. Still quite finicky on this stage manager. Is that even a word? Definitely heard it before. What I mean is, yes, you can resize windows, but not to the exact size that you want. You know, it feels like Apple are saying, yes, resize windows, you know, be my guest except you can only resize it to a specific way in, in the way that Apple really wants it. Even dragging the windows, yes, you can drag them around, but it, it will only land where Apple wants it to land. At least that's my experience so far, right? This could change, but I don't know. This feels a bit iffy. With the Tab S8 Ultra, this is much smoother. Take this with a massive pinch of salt though. You know, there are many variables at play here. The apps are completely different, right? There's Android and iPad OS and specific features in them that are, you know, they're in completely different stages in their development. So it's normal for some things to be completely buggy or simply broken, right? Getting things done on a nine to five basis is usually the boring stuff that we tech reviewers sometimes, you know, we forget to mention or we, we kind of gloss over it. But that's what most people care about. And I'm pretty sure you care about this as well. So I thought that's what I would do here today and we'll be including in the next video. So like I said before, make sure you are subscribed because YouTube, you know, sometimes will make it hard for videos like this to be discovered. And a small channel like mine, do, you know, we do need that subscription and the notification bell to be discovered in the next video. So yeah. It really helps the channel. And the benefit to you is I'm here once a week, at least once a week with a new video, iPad or Android, doesn't matter what it is. If, if it's a tech that I find interesting, you might find interesting. I'm gonna be reviewing it and uh, yeah, we can have some fun together. Can I use Microsoft Word and Excel with multiple windows, resize them? Can I print easily? Will AirPrint work on this mode? You know, what happens when I run a Zoom call? You know. That's a, that's a normal thing that a lot of people do on a daily basis. What happens when I watch content on YouTube, Disney Plus or Netflix? There are loads of questions like this that we, we may need to test in a lot more detail. And my first impressions are quite encouraging. On the Tab S8 Ultra, you can do all of those things really well. So Apple have some, you know, quite a bit of ground to cover here. But what I found so far is that there are limitations with the new iPad OS 16. And I hope that some of these get ironed out, you know, on the next beta releases or certainly before it goes out to public. But I have to be honest with you, what still gets me, even though I'm, I'm encouraged by what I'm seeing, is the fact that Apple always have an angle, right? This feature, if you don't know this already, you know, get ready, it's a bombshell, is only available for M1 iPads, as far as I know anyway. Which means that if you have an older iPad, perfectly functioning iPad Pro, for example, from 2018, 2019, you won't be able to use this feature. You know, I'd love if you were able to at least you know, connect the non M1 iPads to an external monitor and, and be able to work. I'm not asking for the bells and whistles. I'm not going to swear here, right? But, but it's really greedy from Apple. It's it, they're like, let's give them something that they really want, but let's give them, you know, but let's make them buy some more hardware. Let's give them something that they really want. Here we go. But uh, yeah, let's make them buy some more hardware. I mean, there's obviously all the nice little features from iPad OS that, you know, like customization options are really good now. Uh, I will cover all of those in different videos today. I just wanted to share with you what I found so far in terms of being productive and how it compares with the Samsung DeX feature. If you are on the fence about the Type-C Ultra, this could, this alone could be kind of your, your decision-making factor, right? Right now, I still believe that the Tab S8 Ultra offers a much better value for money. It honestly has a better aspect ratio to me, you know, and the display and the speakers are incredibly good. Indoors specifically, they're, they're kind of on par with the iPad Pro. I think the Tab S8 Ultra is still a serious contender for the next year or so. Of course, a new iPad could change this, but right now, the Tab S8 Ultra would be a safer bet if you're not kind of entangled in the Apple ecosystem and you don't mind the Android apps, you know, that to be honest, all the stuff that I care about work perfectly well on Android. You know, there's a bit of a myth that Android apps are crap. You know, a lot of them are very good now. If I take the whole Apple hype out of the way, I'll admit I do get excited when Apple releases new stuff because I do like their product and I've been, you know, conditioned to, to like their product since 
I don't know, the first iPhone. But I don't agree with a lot of things that they do sometimes. And I've been burned so many times recently. But taking all of that emotional aspect out of the way, you know, being very objective here, Apple, as far as I can tell by using the iPad OS 16 beta, are not really pushing the boundaries here. It's amazing, you know, as an Apple customer to finally have some of this stuff. But in my opinion, they barely caught up with some of the features that we already have and have had for, for some time on Android. Whether you like the iPad or the Tab S8 Ultra, you know, or tech in general, I have a video that you might like in this playlist over here. And YouTube reckons you like this video over here. You know, I've made nearly 200 videos so far, so hope they're right. I'll see you soon.